Hello, welcome. This is the first day of our video series where we are going to be going through Dick Brogdon's book, Live Dead Joy. It's a 365-day devotional. This is not a scripture replacement. This is meant to aid in the life or the devotion life of the believer. In fact, every day you are going to have chapters that you're encouraged to go through. Today being January 1, the topic for today's devotion is divine divisions. And the scriptures that are needing to be read before this devotion is Genesis chapters 1 through 3, Psalms chapters 1, chapter 1, and Matthew chapter 1, and Acts chapter 1. If you have not yet already read those chapters, then I encourage you to pause this video, stop, go grab your Bible, read those chapters, and then come back together. But more importantly than coming back to this video is that you actually read those scriptures, and that you spend time with Jesus, and that you spend time asking him what he meant, what was going on here, what's the situation, what's the message, what's he trying to convey to you, so that you can speak with Jesus, so that you can spend time with Jesus. This devotion book, this is nothing if there's no Jesus involved. This is nothing if there's no relationship involved. And so I just encourage you to just take the time, take the time necessary, just like it's necessary to grow your relationship with your spouse. It's necessary to grow your relationship with Jesus. He loves you and he wants to spend time with you. And so I encourage you now to read those chapters if you haven't already. If you have already read those chapters, because this is our church's day, our yearly devotional, we're going to be going through this every day. So for those who have already read the scriptures, then we're going to read this devotion together. The intention of this video series the intention of, of connecting like this is that um, I believe that as church body, as Christians, we need to be daily involved in each other's lives also. We need to, yes, spend time with the Lord, but we need to be also building each other up. We need to be encouraging one another in the faith and growing together in the Word of God. So I, although I can't be in your home with you every day, because that would just be creepy, we can connect via this this media here. We can connect through this video and, and we can go through the devotion together. And, and so I just want to encourage you. I just want to come alongside you. I just want to help you keep the faith and, and watch as you grow in God's word and we do this together. So we're going to start on the first devotion, which is January 1, Divine Divisions. Jesus is constantly pruning us. He loves us so much that he constantly takes the initiative through his spirit to remove from us what he hates, that we might blossom in the things he loves. It's a mistake to think his discipline is seasonal, for he is a constant gardener. Mortification is the work of the Holy Spirit. And as John Owens said, he works in us and with us, not against us or in spite of us or without us. The beginning of a new year affords a fresh start, but let us base all our commitments on the understanding that unless Jesus does the work in us, our intentions are in vain. God hovers over our form and deformity. It is his intention to bring light to what is dark in us. He intends to separate out the darkness, to do the fine surgery that divides those aspects of our character and nature that disgust him from those that bring him glory. He does this that we might produce fruit, fruit that lasts. This divine division is both beautiful and and costly. It costs him sweat and blood. It will likely cost us similarly. We may not like what Jesus cuts away from us. We may not appreciate what he, by his spirit, births in us either. But both should be embraced without fear. The God who is with us conceives and births strange and unprecedented things. Without abiding in Jesus, we can do nothing. This means spending daily, extravagant, 
blocks of time in his presence, in ongoing communication with him. Our responsibility is to position ourselves where Jesus can flood us with mercy. We start with desperation. There must be an inner cry for help based on the realization that we need certain things poured out of our lives and other things grafted in. You see, this desperation helps us to be disciplined. Discipline then yields desire, and desire bears delight. We delight in Jesus. When he is all that thrills and fuels us, we have the means to represent him well among all the peoples of the earth. Clothed in him, we have his power and his character. It is a winsome combination. Amen. That is a good word for us today. I want to read this once again. We may not appreciate what he, by his spirit, births in us either, but both should be embraced without fear. You know, God does a cutting away. We may get mad, we may get frustrated when um, when parents, when teachers, when uh, support systems, people that we entrust our life to and we've asked for prayer from and, and we've divulged information to and they actually go out and pray and they seek God on your behalf and they come back to you and say, hey, I've spent some time praying about this and I just feel a check in my spirit that this is not for you or or that this is something that will be beneficial for you, even though it's going to be hard for you. You know, those things, when God communicates what we should or shouldn't do, or gives us those little checks in our spirit, or, or brings others alongside of us that are going to help us on this journey, we don't always heed good advice sometimes. Sometimes we spurn against it, and we kick against the, the goads, we want to do our own thing. We want to do it our own way. We want to do it in our own power and our own strength. But we just simply can't. We need to simply remember that God hovers over that deformity in us, but he also hovers over what he formed in us. That we were at one time dust. We were dirt. We were gravel. We were earth. We were uh, something. Not yet someone, but we were something. And God took that something and gave it a name. He breathed his life into that something and gave it purpose and intention. And that purpose and intention is meant to be experienced. It's meant to be enjoyed. It's meant to be embraced. And it's meant to be followed. So when, when God is separating that, that out of us what shouldn't be and grafting in us what should be, we need to understand and realize that we are simply something now known by someone. We are now known by Jesus. Jesus is our definition. Jesus is our strength. Jesus is our motivation. And when we do something that is outside of him or goes against the understanding of God or the nature of God or the character of God, that those things, in order to be known by that name, Jesus, they need to be removed from us. They need to be pulled out of us. They need to be cut off of us so that he can graft more of himself into us. We can become more and more like Christ, have more and more of the, the character and the nature of God, have more and more of the desire of God, have more and more of the willingness to follow Jesus. Remember, Jesus is our definition, not us. We don't define for us who we are. We simply follow a plan, a, a procedure that he has laid out, that he has, that he has breathed into us, and that is his will. Jesus didn't do anything on his own, only what the Father has instructed him to do. A servant is not greater than his master. How much more should we follow the plan of God for our lives than to, to spurn against and, and to rage against and to anger against the things of God? True happiness, true fulfillment, true devotion is daily following God. 
knowing where our peace comes from, knowing that we have hope, knowing that we have a plan, knowing that we have a purpose, is of huge comfort and stability. It, it pushes against um, mental disorder. It pushes against um, addictions. It pushes against struggles and temptations. When you know who you are, when you know your plan, when you know your purpose, you know to, what to say no to because it doesn't fit within the plan of God for your life. It doesn't fit within the purpose of God to bring the kingdom of God. It doesn't fit within the vision of God or the glory of God. It takes away from those things. So don't spurn against what God cuts out of your life. Embrace it. Cherish it. Love the fact that God disciplines those that he loves. Because it's not for our own um, demise. It's for the glorification of God in our lives. And so when you commit your life to Jesus and you say, I follow Jesus, also commit yourself to following his plan. Commit yourself to knowing what the word of God has to say about you and your identity and who you are. Your plan, your, your purpose is nothing but his plan. His purpose is everything. And it's the only thing of eternal value. So I just want to encourage you to follow the plan of God. To know who you were before God breathed his life into you. And now that you have the breath of God in your nostrils, in your lungs, and flowing through you, and you are a believer, you are known by the name Jesus. Jesus is your definition. You're not God, but the cool thing is God dwells in you. God abides in you, and you now temple. You're, you're a house. You're a host of God. And, and so it's a, a powerful thing to experience knowing that you are special, that you are loved, that you are desired, not just by another person, but by the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He loves you. He cherishes you. And he loves to spend time with you. So as we go through this devotion together, as we go through this, this reading plan together, understand that God wants to be with you. That he wants to be near you. A lot of questions are going around in our society of where is God? Where is he? He's waiting there in the quiet place. He's waiting there in the place where you um, separate yourself from all the other distractions so that you can spend time with him. He's a jealous God. He is not going to share his time with entertainment, with addictions, with distractions. He is going to protect that time. And if that means you are not willing to spend time with him, don't blame God for the lack of, of, of devotion. He wants to spend time with you. And you need to spend time with him. So I just want to encourage you with that. And I want to pray for you as we go throughout the rest of our day. Heavenly Father, Jesus, I thank you for being near to us. That you are, you are only but a prayer away. And as cliche as that sounds, it's so true though. God, in the middle of our chaos, in the middle of our frustration, in the middle of our, our anger, our rage, our, our disappointment, God, all of that can take a back seat to understanding that we are a child of the King. And that even though frustration, anger, rage, all these emotions, all these things can be overwhelming at times, we can always come back and rest in the, in the knowledge of who you are and knowing who you are helps us better understand who we are. That we are created in the image of God. That we are created for greatness and we are created for a plan and a purpose. That we were something, but you breathed into that something differently than all the other things in this world. That you breathed your spirit and your life into us. And now today we are known as King's Kids. We are known as a child of God. Our definition comes from you, Jesus. So Jesus, today as we go through our day, Father, that you help, that you help us to glorify you, to rest in you, to find our peace in you, 
to find our strength through the hard things that are going to come up today, the disappointment, the bad news. Father, but help us rest in the assurance of you and that you have got this and that we simply need to follow your plan. And when you're cutting things out of our lives that shouldn't be there, you're doing it not to hurt us or frustrate us, but you're doing it to better glorify yourself because you love us and you want to save those around us just as much as you've saved us. So Jesus, I thank you for your plan. I thank you for your purpose. I thank you for your commitment to not leave us alone, that you're there with us. Even when we don't realize it, you're there with us. But we can just simply pray and acknowledge and find you and rest in you. Tremendous comfort, Jesus. I say thank you, Father. Be with us today in your name. Amen.